this is the February 10th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, we're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later by our residents and the public. Okay, first item on the agenda, we have the, uh, the minutes for the February 3rd meeting. Uh, Bob, you want to make a motion? Yeah, I thought they were fine. Um, so I'll move that we accept them. Yeah. So we'll both say aye. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Next item is meetings attended by select board members. Um, Phil? Um, actually, Bob and I might have the same report. We have the same report. So, so you want to go ahead and give it because it applies to both of us. Well, so, so the, the big thing that's going on is is the high school track. And, and so if you remember our past meetings, we... That's the Frontier Capital Committee. Yes, very good. Yep. And uh, the, we put a bid out, a bid request out for, for companies that wanted to come in and design the track. Mm -hmm. And we got nine responses back. And we went through the nine of them. And we invited three of them to come in and interview <coughs> with us. And uh, on Wednesday, we got together and mostly talked about the interview questions and how we were going to run the interview process. And wrote our questions. And, and, and then on Thursday, uh, we interviewed each of them for an hour apiece. And uh, so that was an hour, an hour apiece. And it was tough to cover everything in an hour. Yes, it was. And, uh, and, you know, we had a lot of questions. They didn't even, they, we like told them, we don't want a presentation. You know, so they were, they spent an hour answering a lot of great questions. And then at the end of that, we then had to decide which one we liked the best. And we didn't all agree, but, but we, we voted and it was pretty unanimous and we picked uh, picked one, a company called Berkshire Design. Yes, the Ferguson. local. So they're they're out of Northampton, and basically all of the a big thing in their favor was that every single employee lives in the valley, and uh, many of them are parents of children that go to the school district that they'll be designing the track for, um, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the guys was from so, Sunderland, so, and he's so, done a lot of work for the town of Sunderland. So people who live in the valley are better at designing tracks. Well, they were excellent. And, and they've just done the Greenfield track. They've just done the Mohawk track. They've just done, it's what, you know, they, they, one of the issues was that be, they were broader than just track. They also did the walkway for Sunderland, the, the, the river walk oh, project yeah, okay. that they just did. And they, they do a lot of little other little uh, uh, things like that. And so one of the clear choices was do you pick one of the other companies that really does nothing but tracks, or uh, do you go with someone that has, that does plenty of tracks, but other things as well? So that was one of the main, um, but the fact that they could service us and that they could be there in 10 minutes from with, within a phone call. The other, the other shop was a Connecticut shop that had a Springfield office, and then the other shop was out of Boston, for all, Dedham. Um, yeah, Dedham, sure. Um, uh, and, uh, so you, you learn more about tracks than you are ever going to need to know again in the future. Um, and, and the Springfield office is actually out of Connecticut, but they have a small office in, in Springfield. And, and it really is quite the, the specialized form of construction. Oh, sure. And yeah. um, so, uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. So you guys are now track experts. Learned a lot about track surfaces and... How, you know how you find out what you need to do and all that. Yeah. And the process of us getting together as a committee and sort of hearing out for it was also, I thought, a good one. And um, the decision, you know, every step of the way, don't just sit there and listen to a presentation for an hour from these guys that are professional presenters yeah. and also professional engineers, which means boring presentation. Um, and so uh, we kind of got the boring out of the way real fast, I thought. So now we talk to them a little in more detail about money and, yes. and, and, and how much they'll charge. And they all were about the same percentage of what the track would cost, but we'll see. You know, now they have to come up with the track design and then they'll project what that will cost. Yeah. yeah. But the, the, the company, you know, Berkshire that we worked with, that we went with, has done a lot of jobs with 
FERCOG, for example, and was, they're very open to have FERCOG do the bidding with us. They, they work with them a lot. Right. So and when you go through the contracts and you see how much Andrea Wood charges per hour versus how much the engineers charge per hour, yeah. you want Andrea Wood to do as much of the work as we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's what we're trying to do. That's why FERCOG's good. That's right. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, well, since I was here last, I, I went to the MMA annual meeting in Boston, a uh, good meeting. Went to the uh, Massachusetts Selectmen's Association annual meeting in Boston. That was also very good. Uh, you, you were at that one, right? Yeah. And uh, last week we had a FERCOG council meeting in which we uh, passed the budget for fiscal 2021. And we made out pretty well in that, so we're, we're, we're in good shape. Um, okay, any public comments? I don't see any public comments. You're not here for public comment, right? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. I think okay. I'm You're on the agenda. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, old business, we have to sign the recycling <coughs> contract, uh, <coughs> waste management recycle for uh, the Board of Health for Springfield, Okay, we've been over this. Yeah, yeah this is the revamped contract that um, that uh, I think the contracts are all there. Um, <coughs> we have there, there were a lot of questions about the original contract because it was not clear that it was a three-way <coughs> contract between the state DEP and waste management and the town and that the waste management had signed a separate contract just with the state, yeah. which ended up simplifying things, but we didn't know that, and there were a lot of things that were not in the contract we were presented with that needed to be uh, once we found that out. And there were a few other small revisions. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the but, Board of Health recommended this. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and we only had one copy to sign? Uh, yeah, there may only be one copy. We don't have a lot of choice here. Yeah. yeah. No. This is this is the closest we can get to the continuation of our of our current contract, right. and it's the only one that's even regional. So it's going to be the cheapest. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I move that we sign the municipal recycling contract. Bill, do you have a second? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Or that you signed it. Is it one signature? Yeah, it's three. Signatures. Three. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next item is the discussion discussion of the uh, the date for child abuse awareness month flag raising. The week of April thirteenth to seventeenth. Yeah, that was the week that was suggested to us by the organization. Is that a vacation week? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, it starts Easter. It's always the week of Easter, isn't it, that we have the April vacation? Well, Easter can move around quite a bit. But Easter third is Easter Monday is the 13th. Well, um, it's all up to you as to when you might want to do that. And at some point, we'll also have to uh, discuss the, the duration of the flag. All right, now I thought we, we said we were going to do it for the month. Did we say that? We could. Okay. So, so that would be from whenever we um, have that to the end of the month. Okay, so Easter Monday is the 13th. Why don't we say the 13th? Okay. Okay, is that good with everybody? Is there a cost to the town associated with this plan? No. Then it's fine with me. Okay. All right, uh, you, we need a vote on that. I'll make a motion that we uh, raise the flag for a Child Abuse Awareness Month uh, on April 13th and keep it up for one month. Do I have a second? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Oh, oh so one month. A month. Yeah. Duration, not just to the end of the month. Right, one month duration. That's what they requested, right? Well, April is Child Abuse Awareness Month. It's, okay, it's Child Abuse Awareness Month? Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's good. That, that's why that was. Uh, okay.
but it's but we're doing it for 30 days, let's say. Right. Okay. All right. Next item on our agenda is the uh, letter in support of the Office of Rural Policy. Okay. You're all aware of that. Whose idea was this? Mm. Paul, Mark, uh, Adam. Now yeah, Joe they all worked on it. Yeah. But it also, yeah. I, 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 I gave them my point of view too that I don't agree with this. I, it provides a fig leaf for an administration that has no interest in providing for the needs of the rural communities. And this just allows them to open up a new little bureaucracy, say, look, we're putting someone in charge when we just went through a massive trillion dollar <coughs> chapter 70 education uh, reorganization of the whole way it's done and we were the rural schools were the huge losers in all of this our school is a loser our town is a loser in it and uh, that's two-thirds of our budget so this will be a point person there'll be a chair the expense here yeah there will be a person and yeah. they'll be the person who will we're in charge of arguing against that at the state level yeah yeah that one. yeah it, that's pointless. The policy's done. I mean, the, that all that, it's not like we're talking about, are we going to do it? And and the, the particular charge of the office would be to implement the recommendations of the Rural Policy Advisory Commission, of which this was one recommendation. Right. That there be an office for somebody who is responsible for implementing the, re the other recommendations. So that's what it's for. And this is just a letter of support. I'll make a motion that we sign the letter of support. I second. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? So we won't be unanimous. Okay. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Let me think about that for a second. Um, yeah. Our, our legislators are really for this. I don't know if you've talked to Paul Mark or Adam or Natalie or anything. Yeah, they, they consider it a win to have an additional member of the state bureaucracy on their behalf. So we'll put it down as consider it a big fig leaf for people that have no intention of helping us out. So you're 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 in uh, <laughs> No, you know, let them enjoy their fig leaf. Go, go for it. Let, let them enjoy their fig leaf. Okay. Okay, next item is um, to appoint Michael Merritt to Parks, Recreation, Trails Committee through 6-30-2023. Are you here for that, Jan? No. No, 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 no. but I'll, I'll but second that, and that's a tremendous yeah. appointment. Yeah. And, uh, we all know Michael from lots of other times. Yeah, yeah. but with, if they're lucky, he'll rise to the presidency or the chairmanship of that committee rapidly. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was a good, good appointment. So you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll move to appointment. I thought John just did actually. You I'll second. Did you make a motion? Yeah, just, yeah, just did. Uh, so you, you, you second it. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> vote all in favor. Vote. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, that's good. Okay, that was easy. All right, next item is uh, you're up, Jen. Letter <laughs> supporting the open space committee request for planning update and match for granting uh, match for, for planning funds to match. Uh, planning grant. Yes, I just thought that I, th I think the town and the CPA committee needs to understand these just aren't my personal proposals or even the open space, that these are serious, important town, you know, the town needs these monies, right? And they're yes. eligible for CPA. We have to do it, and so, brilliant idea <laughs> to. Did you must say so yourself. Well, no, it was, it was John's, you know. It was John's suggestion for the open yeah. space and yeah. plan. And um, on the MVP match, you know, last time I was in, it was in December, and there were conversations about it. I sort of thought, well, we could get our match from CPA later. <coughs> but as it turns out, we want it now. Did anything come out of that? Have you heard it, anything? Yes. That? Do we, it, it should be it should be voted by by town meeting. So we need to ask for it now, so that the CPA, the committee, can do its job, <coughs> so that we can get it on the warrant. Uh, we, the match was granted 
Um, but the Franklin Land Trust had applied for funds which we had been planning to use for the local match, and they did not ah. get their grant funded. So all the towns that put forth um, projects are now scrambling for whatever <coughs> funds they can find. And I, uh, um, uh, Ron is willing to put in five thousand dollars for culvert design. Then we, then if we if we do that, then we can apply for construction grants. Right. And uh, so, uh, and and I was willing to put in some from the grant match account that uh, town meeting funded. So. That's, right, because um, we worked it out that you needed our match is ninety four thousand dollars. Yeah. And you. I gave this 20, so therefore 74 would come from needed from this. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and um, actually, since we did this letter, I have, uh, I have submitted to the Community Preservation Committee, um, and I was going to make copies because I sort of thought that, the, uh, that they'll be quick, that the uh, meeting was over there in the other building, you know, where the copy machine is. So anyway, okay, so we have had this. As you know, we had we contracted with Lori Sanders to do this big assessment of the meadow out there, mm -hmm. which I hope some of you have looked at, and the meadow is looking a whole lot better. And one of her, one of the components is it's an educational um, show place of mm -hmm. the perimeter, as you know, invasive plants versus native plants and so forth. And and for that we need signage. Um, and just because there's going to be. A signage explaining what the floodplain is, mm -hmm. you know, why that's important. And John Gates wanted one for the little, um, a little vernal pond, and mm -hmm. but uh, we need something at the at the beginning. Uh, Lori was very impressed with our financial history and the history. So over the years, like since she finished that in 2016, I've kind of, kind of scrambled. How are we going to get this? I don't really know how much it costs. <coughs> it's 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 just a little more than. It's more complex than slapping up some signs. Sure. Because, you know, you want, them, you want to last, oh, well, we're not, we're not going to do that because I uh, <coughs> didn't like that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to cement, we're just pound, you know, pounding. But their methods and how long they're going to, and then what, what's, what's gonna, what are they going to say? You know, mm -hmm. so we got some bigger signs and then some little signs. So I put in a request for $4,000 to the, <coughs> the CPA also. and. I don't really need your endorsement, but I think it would look funny if you've just endorsed one and two, and then they'll say, so I was, so here's my sort of last minute request, is that you just maybe, you know, we just write in on this letter also the sign. Um, request seems like a good idea. You know, just that you don't. Include it with the match. What? Well, include it, there's one, two, and it's a third item. My, my fear is if we bundle them together, then well, they're not. They're separate proposals. I mean, each has a separate CPA form. Okay. Okay. Good. With a line item, you know, and that's a little one for the four thousand dollars. Is it at the at the end? And they each have, you know, the forms. So those are just samples. But the, the bottom, the bottom middle one is really neat. It is cool, isn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. 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 The top right one, not so much. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. There's a lot of, lot of decisions. But five hundred bucks is a good price. Four fifty is a good. If well, you would get one for that, but, but when we priced them out for something else, they were thousands. That well, was like six yeah. years ago. It, yeah. There's a lot of variation. Yeah. Like mine, you know. And this is an internal letter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we can add a third. We can add a okay. third. Sure. Okay. So you want a third for signs for signs for the meadow? Yeah. What are we calling that? Signs for South River Meadow. To interpretive signs. Mm. signs. As opposed to directional signs. Right. We want four thousand dollars for um, interpretive um, signs. Interpretive signs. Signs that interpret the landscape. For the South River Meadow. But as an aside, we're going to put a sign, as I think they're not dumping snow, we're going to put a sign up there with the flat area, which and says parking. Interpretive <laughs> sign. So was this maybe down by the bench? Is that where, where Well, we yeah, well, I mean, the sign would be there, you know, I mean, well, 
Hopefully, another issue. Yeah, it's yeah. got to figure okay. it out. Okay, I need at least three of them so one of my dolls can claim each one. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're all good, we're good with that. Yeah, everybody. So are you good with that? So. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, sign this letter to the um, community preservation committee for uh, three proposals uh, that we endorse. Um, as written here in the letter. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the CP, the, the reason for the timing here was because the CPC committee was meeting at 6.30, but in the middle of the snow this morning, they canceled oh. it to next Monday. So... Still at 6.30? Uh, nothing for a meeting. Uh, uh, yes, I think it's 6.30. So I don't know if you want to do a different method of communication. The letter, Tom. You know, I don't need to bring it to them, then. Mm -hmm. or I could bring it to them. And want, maybe you could email it to Malcolm or something. Yeah, I can scan it and uh, send it, and then maybe you can pick up the original. Yeah, that's awesome. <coughs> I'll leave it in the open space. Okay, good. It. Yeah, but you've got Malcolm's email now, and he's he's the chair. Thank you, Jen. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go to uh, the town administrator update since we don't have the finance committee here yet. Thomas. It's been relatively quiet. up on a discussion from last time. Pat Lynch is quite concerned that there be some kind of newsletter from the town to replace the visitor. They did. No. Noting that not everyone in town uses a computer or would go online to see the visitor, and that she needs to get the Council of Aging schedule out to as many people as possible. I've asked her to come in next week to uh, talk with you about it. I know Louise Beckett and Kathy Lamas are also interested, and I've reached out to them as well, trying to pull everyone together for a joint effort for compilation, editing, and production. Perhaps this could ev uh, eventually be a committee. Uh, so that's all up for next week. Okay. Um, Didn't, um, I thought that, uh, um, Veronique the, 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 is, is not interested in being part of that. Uh, okay. But she was interested in, in having it happen. Okay. <laughs> so Louise is the one that needs to get in touch with you then. So Louise and Kathy were the, the two people that we talked about last week that might continue the visitor? Uh, yes, and, and Pat um, has always been interested as well. Uh -huh. And um, would, would that be mailed out like the original visitor, or would that be uh, something that, online? That, that's, oh, it would, oh, the whole point would be to mail it out, oh, okay. yeah, as far as Pat's concerned. <coughs> Um, because a couple of people have mentioned to me that they had heard that there was going to be an online version of the visitor and that well, would that, work for that's something like this. That's the but, yes. Um, I forwarded the first call to the cemetery commission today Great. and offered to replace one of the headstones for a family member that is apparently in very poor condition. Uh, in departmental news, the highway maintenance building is set to go out to bid Wednesday. <coughs> As you heard earlier from Walter, this is last week, the final decision on the winning bid is expected March 31st. Also, the highway shed has been given a temporary occupancy permit with the understanding that the electrical and emergency exit lights and lighting still need to go in. So we'll have equipment in there soon. That's uh, awesome. I have forwarded the certificate of occupancy to Maya so that it will be uh, counted as fully insured. <coughs> I'm also in the process of making sure that the highway maintenance building is insured while it is being constructed. We have to have all of our uh, buildings on a list in order for them to be insured. And so I'm, I'm 
taking steps to do that as it's actually being built, which is... Doesn't the contractor have to ensure their own workplace? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to have, you don't want the town to be paying for double insurance, do you? Um, I have actually asked that question of Maya, and they have not yet gotten back to me with an answer. Uh, in other news, the Department of Revenue has posted an extensive series of excellent, concise videos on municipal finance, each about five or ten minutes long. Please let me know if you'd like the link. Yes, yeah, please sure. send it along. Yeah, yeah, definitely. As you know, the town's application for community aggregation has finally been approved by the Department of Public Utilities. We can now look forward to reviewing the results of the survey to inform our choices going forward. As you may know, the State House of Representatives just passed a bill giving the Cannabis Control Commission final say over host community agreements, presumably due to a large number of agreements that included consideration of factors other than the direct effects of having the operation in the municipality. This bill could affect the abilities of cities and towns to negotiate host community agreements that reflect local circumstances, though, and is opposed by the MMA and many of those in STAM. I send a personal note to Senator Hines about this and would be happy to draft a letter for the select board if desired. Please do. No, I, I thought that, that was a good that that was a good development. And that streamlining the process is good for everybody. And that it's taken way too one of the reasons it's taken so long to do these things is because towns are dithering for so long. Well let me put it on the agenda for next time and we can have a fuller discussion about that. Um, Residents will be pleased to hear that both the Mass Department of Public Health, um, it, the, the Mass Department of Public Health believes both um, that at this moment the risk of transmission of the news making coronavirus in Massachusetts is very low, and that our local and regional health agencies are staying well informed. Great. There was a lot of bad coronavirus news today, though. So yes, there was. Uh, Thank you, Tom. But our governor has recognized that there's 10 emergency health emergencies, I think, in our state right now. Child poverty, uh, opioid, um, suicide, etc. There's We do have many, many epidemics that are killing thousands of people in our state every year. The coronavirus is not anywhere near the top of that. Right, right. <coughs> not yet, anyway. Do we have the uh, Finance Committee on here? <laughs> Yeah. But yesterday, 24 citizens, U.S. citizens, died on a cruise ship. Yesterday. Right. So, yeah. it's, it's just, just getting here. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I thought you canceled your. I thought you canceled your meeting. Uh oh. John, do you have something to talk about? Or no, I, I just had a couple of questions, really. No, uh, All right. Janet Shea uh, oh. was just here. She had planned on... Just with, with their procedural... We should have entertained you perhaps back when you know, we have public comment, public comment or something okay. like that. But oh, sorry, I thought that no, was... No, no, no. Yeah. Well, that's, what's, that's what that's for. We can revisit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We may not be able to answer your questions right now because... Sure. Uh, if there's anything that involves deliberation, I'll have to decide so, something. But and if it's administrative, I can answer offline. That's the CPA committee. Okay. They're supposed to meet um, in the town hall. They don't have a key in the town office. Oh. <coughs> the question was about uh, putting the Warren article on up for the next town meeting. I see that there's a citizen petition up for amendments to the bylaws. Do they have to only be citizen petition, or can it be? Can you decide to? Put we can put one on, you or it can be done by citizen petition. Okay, and if you want it to way to look like in a certain way, do it by citizen petition. I'd like it to look like the town supports it, actually. So, so no, I mean the the people who run the town support it. So let me the procedure the so so like the procedure is the way that the select board treats like a citizen petition like procedurally, is that we count the signatures. If there's enough, it gets the approval. And then the process where you like weigh whether it's like legal yeah. or appropriate or wise all comes later. Gotcha. 
But, um, and so like we approve like a citizen's petition without what giving a judgment on the merits at all, just like based on the seat. And then like later on in the process, we have a chance to put our vote next to it. But those are like getting the petition and then having a select board opinion about it are two separate gotcha. things that are separated by like a good month or so. Okay. Take that magic number or what's that magic number of signers on a petition? It's ten. Um, ten. I think for a special town yeah. meeting it's four, but for a regular town meeting it's only around ten. Ten. Okay. So but, for you and, and there's a lot of people in town that believe in signing any petition just because they believe in democracy and they, they believe in like that's the best way to address. They have signatures. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I saw that. Yeah, and the planning board is going to hold a hearing to talk about those. That you know. Yeah, that's okay. That's the petition. That's. Works. Okay. No. I just that was my question. What was the procedure and how yeah. you know we have other warrant articles put on there that might be, you know, based in 700 and something But else. I'm sure at town meeting people are going to know what the planning board thinks of the amendments Roy, that and I the planning board has carefully thought out. So I don't know if he's... Yeah, by law. So. Uh, he didn't email him yeah. back, so I don't so know. So the planning board is holding a hearing and they're going to have to decide as the board, you know, what they think about it. Right. But you should think... Do your and then, and then bring it to you. Yeah. Right. So just thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night. Okay. Uh, we're missing one, right? Okay. Yes. Concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns? Do you have any concerns? Um, Hearing none. Th this this week is a big uh, budget. The budget stuff for Frontier and okay. for the grammar school. So you you all should know that. That's, so tomorrow is the Frontier Budget hearing. Um, so that's one of the, so we It's announcements, but they, they yeah. won't be here for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the Frontier meeting is 6 o'clock tomorrow at Frontier. Um, and that's the public budget presentation. Frontier tomorrow at 6. Conway Grammar School. Conway Grammar School is Thursday at 6. All right. So the, the this, big, is a big week. this is the big school budget number, public unveiling. Both, wow. both yeah. at six? They're both at six. Not, not final numbers, I will I will uh, emphasize, but pretty good numbers. Have the cherry sheet items come out yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, much better. I mean, last year, you would call Frontier was a double-digit assessment for yes. our town. Yes, so we started 13 kids. Yes, we are, uh, we are nowhere near that this year, so that's oh, good. good. All right, so we have the Finance us. Committee with us. <laughs> yes. So it's time for the time. joint meeting with the Finance Committee. Okay, we have a report on the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Bob, you want to give us that report? So hopefully Tom is going to hand out copies. Well, you should have copies. You should have copies. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. And I want to read it to the folks at home. It's, sure. It's very complete. <laughs> so the, the one important thing about this is that is that Tom is proposing and the board supports, the, the committee supports, having one warrant oh, item. That, that's the next agenda. Okay. So but, we'll but, cover that. So, so, so this is trying to be a, a, a summary of what all of the capital requests were this year. Um, and so just as a question of money, I have uh, that we have $379,670 in the capital stabilization fund, and, uh, and uh, we're gonna be putting some more money and we're proposing that we put in 250,000 more um, You're proposing this year. 250,000. 250, is that what I said? 200. Ah, I was gonna propose 150. Uh, I thought it was 250. Well, we're going to, we'll, right, we'll, we'll deal with that at another time. Yeah. Those are big numbers. Yes, they are, but the capital numbers are big. The ones we're going to mark. Yeah. So, 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 so last year, so there's a summary here of what we bought last year. So we bought one new heavy truck. We bought a uh, mini excavator and, and uh, 
six thousand, I think it was, in funds to to supplement the uh, not enough money that we had passed the town meeting to buy the Kubo, the trade in for the Kubota tractor, and uh, and so that was that was those were the vehicles that we purchased. Um, we purchased a new compactor for the transfer station, and we purchased six new air packs for the for the new fire truck. Um, and the the fire department had come in asking for ten new air packs, but they were happy to split it into enough for the new fire truck, and then this year to come back for an additional four for the other fire truck. And uh, so that was that was the capital request last year. And, uh, and so this year we re received um, five vehicle requests from Ron, of which, after talking to Ron, he was happy to, to drop two of those and postpone them until next year. And, uh, and then the additional four packs for the fire department that were postponed from last year. And so that's a total of 362700 So. So in my note into you, I, I have some ideas of why we did that last year. And the important one really is why, why we really felt it important not to give Ron the two additional vehicles. And, and one of the reasons is that it does make our expenditure this year in, inordinately large. You, you know, I mean, we're spending a lot of money as it is on capital. And, uh, and, and the expenditure currently that we know of and that we can project from our projection for vehicles Ron's going to want next year would have been low. And so we would rather it was fairly stable. And the vehicles that are being postponed, we think Ron agrees, we're, we're okay to put them off for a year. So. Well, at least now they'll be under roof. Hmm? At least now they'll be under roof. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah. They'll be undercover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and they'll be in, in the shed. That's yeah, right. Yeah, the old ones. Yeah. More, All of them. More money expended. Uh, and, and, and one of the things that's interesting also that we talked a lot in our committee about was, you know, a, two years ago, the Capital Improvement Committee had voted to support a kind of a new policy of trading vehicles in before they are at their end of life. Um, so ve vehicles that have a high trade-in value, especially among private contractors, um, we can trade them in when they're five or six years old and get, you know, and Ron projects that we should be able to then, over the life of the vehicles, it'll cost, it'll save Conway a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so this is the first year that we're actually trying that. Um, the, 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 2014 Volvo and the 2015 Volvo, Volvo, you know, normally when we're proposing to replace vehicles in Conway, we're not, we're not proposing to replace vehicles that are only five or six years old. And so, so there was a big discussion about this at town meeting last year, and I don't, there may be again this year, I don't know, but to some extent we're now going to be really putting Ron on the spot about his belief of what he can get for the trade in value of these. So, so like this Volvo compact loader, we have $50,000, but it's like a $200,000 piece of equipment. And so the 50,000 is is just for the trade in. So. And and this this is the part where he has faltered in the past. Well, well so so, so we're going to see. And 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 like some some of the stuff on the list like the um, the, the the concept of uh, of trading things in while they still has while they still have a, a high trading value is one thing, but that concept does not apply to a one ton pickup, which no, loses, and, which, and, which loses forty percent of its market value when you drive off the lot. And he would not be applying that to the one ton pickup. But it's a twenty fourteen. Well, it's fine. It's fine. It's, mm -hmm. it's I mean that is that's what he tried. That, that was his logic last year, and and, and that and, and I tried to get him to to, to, to not to, you know he did p postpone it. Yes. But he took lump after lump over this pickup truck last year. He's going to do it again. And um, right, let, let, let's yeah. just let's just move it along. It, it's not on our list for this year. So. Oh, next year. All right, that's good. So the only other the other interesting thing, and I'll just say this so that when when or if this happens is that Ron is applying for a grant. You think we should talk about this? 
Rob is applying for a grant that if we get that grant, it will help us pay for this large vehicle. From the state? Is one of your from state? the feds. From the USDA? Yeah. Okay. No, it, it's, it's a grant through the Volkswagen lawsuit program. Oh. And that, that through that program, the feds have money that they're using to allow yes. municipalities to buy newer vehicles, get, get, getting rid of old vehicles. It's kind of a cash for a kind of thing. Yeah. This, we, and I'm the representative on the committee, in case you guys didn't know. Uh, we, uh, the decisions we looked at excluded this grant. This grant is a, if it comes in, it's great. Yes. But if it doesn't come in, yes. we have a plan. Yes, again, we are proposing 240000 for the new truck, which is what it's going to cost, and it's definitely at its end of life. Right. Um, but, but Ron is extremely optimistic and, you know, uh, hopeful that the town will receive this grant, and he's working very hard to try to yeah. get yeah. some, so, some of this money. It, it's wrong to call it a grant. It's not a grant. It would be a lawsuit settlement. Uh, yes. Yeah, but grant confuses people, and that's what that's what we're going to discuss. Whatever the Norman we would get money. Yeah, but there's okay. still good. So let, 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 let me appropriate. It may, in fact, be because I, my at least as I recall, the town isn't free to just spend this anywhere. It would have to go into like a special account for a piece of equipment down sure. the road. Yes. Or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, so you can't. So the timing and <coughs> amount of the grant are always on, or whatever you want to call it. That's right. Around. Right. We don't. It, you don't know when it might come in. Right. right. Okay. Anyway. But I just wanted to mention it because, you, you know, it, Ron is very optimistic about it, and and. Uh, is who's helping him write the grant? Is, is anyone? It, his yeah. new Terry. administrator. Terry Walker. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions on this report from the capital improvements plan? How, how, so how final is this? Settlement from Volkswagen aside. Yeah, yeah, this has nothing to do with that. Or bring to May 11th town meeting? So we're going to bring to town meeting the request for the 362,700. Okay. Um, you know, somewhat partially funded by capital stabilization and funded by additional money from wherever it's so appropriate. So you're talking about emptying out the 379,000 capital stabilization fund this year and adding 250 more to it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's going to turn into 150 unless you want to take from general stabilization more, which which has that. But. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can we can figure out that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to take it from yeah. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is other possible annual town meeting articles. Tom? Uh, yes, and these are, um, I just want to, because we're meeting with the Finance Committee, just go over the uh, the possible um, money articles, which uh, is the first section, uh, actually 2 through 13. Uh, first one is just the uh, the operating budget. I'll, I'll, I should have some reasonable numbers for that soon with the school budget coming out. Uh, the FERCOG actually just came out with their budget, but I haven't received it yet. And I'm also waiting for insurance uh, figures. Um, uh, a note, the 900 account employee benefits is up almost $84,000. That's more than half of the rise in our uh, projected operating budget due to additional health care plans and uh, uh, an assessment from the Franklin Regional Retirement System, which is the, the pensions. So so that's a, that's an extraordinary hit to take in that one line item. Um, and you know it's which one it's a substantial amount of money. Which which one? Oh, okay. number two. The, the, Two. It's a number two, the, oh, the yeah. 900 right. budget. Portion that is because of six more right. account right. number. Right, right, right. Is up. Um, and you, uh, and then there's, uh, I'm hoping for the stabilization funding, and I had in here 150,000 free cash. Uh, we could also add 100,000 from general stabilization if the if that's what the capital improvements planning committee has been using in their in their uh, projections for the future, mm -hmm. but. Um, we should have a discussion about that uh, because it, it's 
interesting that we have two different stabilization accounts. Most towns don't. Um, and we could consider merging them. But I think doing it slowly is a good idea because otherwise we're tempted to go beyond our, our limits. Uh, then I have number four. Um, I am proposing, as, as uh, Bob mentioned earlier, um, a single capital improvements article, which again is how a lot of towns do it. This uh, recognizes the work that the committee puts into it and really a lot of the discussion about the prioritization <coughs> and the timing and um, the appropriateness of the proposals is worked out within the committee. So it's setting a little bit more of a high bar for town meeting. It, it, it can always vote to split items out if it really wants to, um, but it would have to do that. Now that we have an excellent, um, hard-working committee that's doing capital planning, you, right. um, it's, uh, um, I think it's time to consider this, uh, <coughs> what is usually considered a best practice for towns. It's a best practice for town administration or town government because you get to skip the actual votes on individual items and you get to bundle them up. And the average person doesn't know that they can split them up. And, um, so you'll have well, to that, make that, the motion that, that to be explained. Explain. Um, or, or you could just respect people's vote enough that you can try to persuade them as to the wisdom of each individual. All right, all right. We, we have we have time to think about that. Go. Right, next well, item. Well, so so when the article is presented, it's not going to detail what it's for. Yeah, it will absolutely yeah, detail yeah. what it's yeah, for. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. well, you get one vote for all of them. Right. Unless there's a motion to package deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so, yeah. The uh, next highest item is making up the current health benefit gap. This is uh, one of the reasons that that employee benefits line is going up $84,000 next year. We have to actually absorb some of that this year, um, and that's $32,500. We can get that from free cash. Uh, but it is a gap in fiscal year 20, in the current year. So Can you explain the gap again? Uh, we had six additional health care plans that we weren't planning on. And some of that was, was people, uh, we're not entirely sure of the reasons. We believe some of it was people going from individual plans to family plans, or <clears throat> perhaps uh, <clears throat> coming onto plans if their spouse um, thought that the Conway plan was better, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. So we have. Uh, Jan usually budgets for an additional two plans, um, but this, uh, well, we still have quite a gap, and totaling $32,500. Uh, also an annual contribution to OPEB, uh, easily done from free cash. Uh, we've been giving $20,000, that's a good, that's a good number. <coughs> at once have, have an idea that would be yeah. a little bit outside the box. One of the reasons that uh, it's good to keep up OPEB contributions is because banks look favorably upon that when you go to borrow. They, they look to see that you're paying attention to your town liabilities and working to fund them. Of course, Conway's a small town. The uh, annual payment for our actual um, employee health costs is uh, retiree health costs is about half a percent of our operating budget. Uh, so I had the idea that if we if we had say a hundred thousand dollars in the account and we always paid out of our OPEB account while refunding it, that we could say to a bank that we have been funding our employee liability out of our OPEB funds for X number of years. And that might be easier for them to comprehend than the fact that we have a million and a half dollar liability. Mm -hmm. So we could show them in a very concrete way that we are acting responsibly. Uh, because the tendency is just to say, well, you don't have enough, but our liability is so low that there might be another way to argue the case, which is uh, something that I have yet to persuade the treasurer of, but I 
love to think outside the box, and so we'll continue to but try. We fund OPEP, but it's through like a stabilization account. I mean, exactly. It's, it's, that's yeah. how I think. Yeah. We don't fund yeah. anything out of it yet. Right. But at and, some point, and, yeah. and is there is there are there guidelines as to what, at what point you start pulling out of there? Well, well, no. That you start pulling out of there when you have it, uh, employees that need those benefits, yeah. or former employees that need those benefits. Yeah. There are guidelines to as to how much yeah. to put in. Well, which we well we're we supposed to fully fund it. <laughs> well, what I'm trying, no, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I find historically I find the concept I don't like the concept other than if you look at it as a stabilization account because we have been paying as we go. And why can you not pay as you go? If there's an argument to be said, well, 10 years from now, here's, here's what your, your expenses look like, but 10 years from now they're supposed to go here, then to me this makes sense. Other than that, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, it, it's, it's basically the law that we need to find yeah. it. So, but, but actually, your two points that you addressed, so first of all, there is like a demographic explosion coming where this stuff is necessary. Um, as the baby boomers really yeah, exit, yeah. whatever. And, and um, the other thing is that, uh, um, there, like, there is, uh, there, there are arguments to, like, not fully fund it. There, there are legitimate arguments to not fully fund it based on the fact that um, all of our large cities in this state are so many hundreds of millions of dollars in arrears to what they should be funded that they cannot ever fully fund it. So and, 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 and we know we know right now sitting here that the state will have to bail out what cities and towns for this. And, and, and so, so there's a real question about there's a real question about whether those that are financially responsible will end up getting penalized when the free money is getting sent out. Yeah, we we, we um, and, have we and, have to do we have to do what we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and you know, it, it, actuarially, it's the worst case that we have to fund. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So you know, it, it's but just, it, what Tom proposed, so we could put in twenty thousand per year and withdraw sixteen or fifteen, just just so that your balance would. It, it it has a huge impact on your bond rating, believe it or not. Like yeah. whether you're yeah. whether you're in arrears with OPEB or not, which right. is ridiculous. It's, uh, yeah. And that seems like but, the issue. But it almost, when we looked at it, it almost like we, if we ever do go to get rated again, which we didn't for our garage, because just to get rated <laughs> costs so much. <laughs> but but if we ever do, like the amounts that you pay in OPEB, you will get. You would almost when I took a look at this stuff, you almost like get it back in like a lower bond percentage that you get. It's really like a big number if, within that equation. You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. 20,000 20, doesn't come near what right. we should yeah. be putting in. Right. Right. However, right. by putting in that 20,000, right. uh, the bond raters say, oh, <coughs> they're funding their liabilities. Yeah, we're aware of this. We're aware of this. <laughs> yes. Okay, and that's the reason for it. Okay. Yeah. Thomas, okay. next item. Going on. <laughs> um, as we discussed earlier, um, I thought I would offer 15,000 of the grant match fund to the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant that we have been given, but the the place we were expecting to find the local match did not come through. The Franklin Land Trust did not receive a grant to give the local match for Franklin County Towns for this grant. So uh, we're trying to come up with additional funds to do that. Um, the highway department's chipping in some. I offered some from this account. And the Open Space Committee is asking for $74,000 from the uh, Community Preservation Committee. They may, they may get that, they may get part of that, but um, that's, that's why I'm asking for uh, the 15000 to be replenished, is because I'm expecting that it will be paid out. Uh, there, there's, I reserved $5,000 in case a smaller grant comes along. What's the 74000 for? The rest of the local match for the grant that we got. Mm -hmm. It included a lot of projects, including um, dis, um, preparing the South River Corridor <coughs> for easement studies and doing culvert work. Is this uh, the floodplain you're talking yeah. about? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so oh, there, there's, there's a number of things. My question. And we can, uh, I'll, I can give that information to anybody who wants later. Um, uh, the treasurer is considering a pay
payroll software conversion. Uh, she went over this in detail with the select board, and and you guys, you were here. Um, yes, that's right. Our, uh, oh, oh in, in, in her budget presentation. So yeah, you were she here, did in her budget. Yeah. Right, sure. So you know about that. That's $11,040. Um, the the ambulance cash? article. I'm sorry? Okay. Well, what's the free cash that we're working on? Where right now we are? Have we been, as of the end of the summer, is that the last time? Mike yeah, I think we have something like 460000 left, but don't okay. hold me to that. I can, right. I, I can get you that. I'll, I'll have my uh, Excel sheet and okay. better numbers uh, once I get the um, school budget oh, insurance okay. and for five numbers. Uh, the ambulance article, we always kick in $15,000 from the operating budget. The additional amount we need to make up based on the budget presented is 27693 That comes from ambulance receipt <coughs> reserve, which has that money in it. Yeah. Um, but we've been building up that receipts reserved um, for a while, and or at least a couple of years, and so I'm not proposing a transfer to ambulance stabilization from the receipts reserve because that acts as kind of um, their own reserve fund. And if they need to buy a piece of equipment or something like that, they can do that from their, res from their receipts reserved um, without going into the town's reserve fund or asking for more more money from town meetings, so it's it's good to have that be at a healthy level, and it really reached a low level last year. So I think letting it build up for another year is a good idea. Uh, the assessors are, have their usual uh, well, their usual uh, one article on uh, five thousand dollars for uh, one fifth of the five year recertification process. Uh, that's just uh, so that we pay it a little bit at a time. And for their uh, software conversion, this should be the final year. Uh, they're asking for $4,500. Both of those amounts would come from their own overlay reserve account as well. This is money that's set aside in case people have abatements or exemptions uh, that they don't take. And they usually have plenty of money in that. Uh, we should know within a I think, uh, uh, well, certainly by the time my preliminary budget comes out. Uh, and then library, uh, as usual, uh, adding 2.5%, which is what the state does. Uh, that's 2,641. And that's enough to keep us in good standing with yes. the municipal yes. regional library? Yeah, that's the, that's the point that's of that. That's the magic number. Yeah. 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 And then uh, there, there would be a community preservation article. The library is asking for about $88,000. Um, and this is a slightly old document, certainly pre, uh, pre 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, this only has 20000 for the open space plan. They're also now, we know, asking for uh, 74 for the municipal vulnerability preparedness local match. Um, and also uh, $4,000 for a sign project uh, for the South River Meadow, an interpretive uh, and, uh, set of interpretive signs. So that's what the money articles look like right now. Uh, as you can see, a lot of it, um, it none of it is um, being proposed uh, from raise and appropriate. So it's all either coming from free cash, capital stabilization, general stabilization, ambulance receipts reserve, or the assessor's overlay reserve. So again, we're not, um, uh, where the only tax money would be for the operating budget, which I think is a <coughs> good trend to continue. Uh, that said, the overall budget is looking um, not quite as tight as last year. Again, the, um, the 900 level is about half of what all these, um, uh, oh, I, I'm sorry, no, the, the 900 is, the 84,000 in the 900 account is about half of the increase in the operating budget so far. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's based on my own estimates for the schools and the fur and insurance, and those are, you know, highly variable numbers. So at this point, um, that 900 item is is half of the rise in Article Two, um, so it's it's 
looking more like the year before in terms of the rise in the, the percentage rise rather than last year, which was a you know a very low 1.4 percent. Um, now it's looking a lot like four and a half percent, which was what it, what it was two years ago. Uh, so we had a really good year last year. Yeah. Um, this year is looking much more like the year before. Okay. And and I I should have um, I should have a complete budget. I hope to have a complete budget in two weeks. I'll certainly have one in three. Okay. Question? Yeah, so I have a question regarding for uh, item number four here on the possible articles, Tom. Yes. Will uh, Ron be presenting in more detail his assumptions in terms of what he estimates the trading to be? And I'm uh, hoping that the Capital Improvements Planning Committee presents the article. Okay, good. I, I'm sure Ron will be available. Ron will be there to answer questions. Yes. Yes. But will you have that information available too, but, mm -hmm. so we don't have to rely on Ron? Yes. Well, yes. As much I mean, as possible. Yeah. All right, good. That means the dollar amount. Should, you, should, that means an hour or less of the meeting. Now, <laughs> meeting. No, well, we'll see. Thanks. I mean, uh, it'll be helpful for us, too. I mean, that's one question I think we're going to have. I mean, Tom has already asked over here for more detail on these uh, four individual items in terms of what the assumptions are. Purchase price, estimated trade, and all that. And uh, this, is, this is very good, Tom. Thank you for doing this. For the first time in, in uh, well, the whopping total of four years on the finance, we've never had this kind of thing. It was very helpful. And uh, my only suggestion would be that in um, going forward for larger uh, pieces of equipment, fire and, and highway department, that uh, you know Ron didn't have the information when he presented his operating budget, but you know uh, repair schedule that kind of thing, yeah. and best practice what towns will do is put down what the estimated repairs might be to keep the truck as opposed to trade in. And mm -hmm. It under it helps better uh, buttress the <coughs> argument for uh, why the equipment needs to be traded in rather than kept. The rationale for it. Uh, perhaps you could just talk a, a little bit about the process that the Capital Improvements Planning Committee went through and and um, how, how it <coughs> developed uh, what you... Uh, what you ended up with in your report, just in terms of the process. Well, or, or, or Roy, we, we have we have uh, um, updated a lot of the, the spreadsheets that we have for for vehicles, and we do have spreadsheets that we haven't filled out yet. Okay. For and and what's wonderful is that Patricia Vincesi has joined our committee, who was the manager at at Situate. Oh. And and uh, where they had you know hundreds of vehicle requests, sure. and they had hun many hundreds of of uh, capital equipment requests, and a, and a very good process for evaluating them. And so we did try out her process on our five vehicles, okay. um, but but there they do a lot of competition between different departments who are all making capital requests and. And here in Conway, you know, people tend not to make a vehicle request unless it's extremely necessary. And it doesn't appear that that's true in other towns. Uh, yeah, right. um, so, so, so she is asking a lot of really good questions about parts of our town um, capital that traditionally we have just always spent out of, out of current funds. Yeah. Um, like, like, you know, how many years do we have left in the grammar school parking lot? Or how many years do we have left on the grammar school roof? Or all of the roofs for all of our buildings? Yes. And that we should have a schedule for that. Oh, yeah. And, and so, you know, you were asking about, about equipment maintenance, but she is wondering, or she is, would like to work in the next year towards having a much more extensive oh, schedule right. of future expenditures yeah. uh, instead of just assuming we will yeah. pay for it from, yeah. from funds. And we talked about OPEC before in terms of borrowing money, but when you go to a funder, having a capital expenditure plan that, and have everything on a schedule gives the, the uh, lenders a lot more comfort. To, you know, in the past, we've kind of done this for the, for the vehicles. Um, and, 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 and like Roy is, was, is doing a plan for all of the IT equipment. Mm -hmm. okay. 
time. So, so I, do, you, do you remember from our from the presentations this week that the, what the one engineer talking about the design lifespan of an asphalt road or parking lot is ten years? Yeah, not that far. Yeah. <coughs> so, so let me just add to something. Sure, absolutely. And that is so the this so the the, CIA, the capital improvements committee is one thing, but then deciding whether to borrow how you're going to finance this is now really, I, I think it, it's not just the finance committee, I think it's a collaboration between the finance committee and select board is what right, I think. Yeah. But they're, you know, we're not used to borrowing a lot of money in this town, or any money at times. Um, this, you know, uh, Trish, Trish is, uh, comes from towns that are always borrowing money. Yeah. And all of the and conferences we all go to, they you know, they want us to be borrowing well, yeah. a lot more money than yeah. we ever do. Yeah. That's because they don't care about the towns. Because all the big towns are these. <laughs> well, so there's that. It's a, it, I, I don't have any good answers, but it's a matter of philosophy, really. You know, do you want to? And, and I uh, have included uh, for some years in my preliminary budget a statement explaining that when banks, uh, another factor in, in ratings is that banks look at the amount of debt load the town has, mm -hmm. and if it's very low, that's a warning sign to banks because it signals that they may not be uh, preparing for the kind of capital expenses that they will be needing and therefore are, are uh, vulnerable to emergency needs which might um, drain the, the town's ability to borrow. If it needed to, we, we have a borrowing limit. We can't borrow you know, yeah. as much money as we want. So uh, we, we need to plan it out as part of our long-term financial yeah. planning in order to get a good bond rate. That's another thing. So uh, they, all, they all play together. I do think there's most people sense. in Conway support the, the way the town has typically been operating yeah. of so, saving. Support. So I, so I think it that way, but but, but it depends how you phrase that. I, I, the one thing that's really clear to me is that the, t the the town has not town meeting has never supported the concept of capital planning, just the concept, and and so that to me that's the biggest hurdle that 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 Ron goes through every year. The guys in the back of the room leaning against the wall saying, "How many hours that machine got on it? That machine gets ten thousand hours." And, and that's where the argument has always gone downhill for the people that want this, this equipment. And, and, and when Ron st and when they question deeply, you know, where do you get that number about the, it's always, well, I made one phone call. Or, you know, that's just a feeling. It's what I'm hearing from, that. that's a reasonable number from what I'm hearing. And the numbers that were presented for like actual trading value have always been really soft. And, and that's where at town meeting, the thing has fallen apart. And none of this has gone through. Well, and I myself, year. I distrust if trading on this heavy equipment or is like anything else, it just depends on conditions. Right. I mean, this month it's one thing, next month it could be something else. Yeah. So okay. it's not really something that you can count on, some very yeah. low number. If it comes in better, great. You know, I mean. Can I mention one more thing, John? I know one you want to end thing. this. So, yeah. so uh, there is a, a, Ron brought up something in the last meeting that we had when we met with him, sort of asking, is it really necessary for me to trade it in as opposed to sell it on the open market? Oh. And, and he thinks that there may be some municipal rules about what happens to the money if you sell it. It has to go into you know, the general fund and, and the trade. Anyway, it's, it's, it, it, he's not sure. But, and so Trish is interested in this also. Oh. And she has confidence that we could probably get more money from much of this equipment if we sell it on the open market than if oh, we yeah. trade it in. Well, of course, you'll get a commission. And, and so, so she, she is looking into it, Ron's looking into whether you're required to trade it in or whether it's possible to sell them on the open market. Okay. Monty Hall is great. So all of this Monty Hall might come. Thank you guys for coming in. <laughs> Let's make okay. a deal. Yeah. All right. Next item on the agenda. Concerns of the selectmen. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. No concern. Okay. Mail. All right. We got... Um, we got something from the uh, Children's Advocacy oh, Center. That's the flyer uh, that this, Greenfield had this for its flag raising. This is for um, Greenfield. Greenfield. And we've been invited. Oh, 
Uh, we've got a letter from uh, local boards of health and administrators and uh, associated staff. That's who it's to. It's uh, about the uh, coronavirus. It's from our uh, Lisa White, our public health nurse. We are going to be hosting uh, the legislative breakfast here in Conway on March the 6th. It looks like we're going to have it in this room. Uh, is that your vegan? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, February the 18th, because Monday is a holiday. Monday is present. Yeah. I gotta collect that. Okay. Uh, and, that holiday, that's for sure. We're going to go into executive session for reason one to conduct contract negotiations um, about the town administrator. Uh, we're going to we're not going to have the town administrator with us in this session. Um, take a vote, Phil. Roll call vote. Aye. Okay. And myself, and we will adjourn from the executive session.